Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for this weekend's UFC main event between Caitlin Vieira and Misha Tate, the former champion. Um, okay, so Caitlin Vieira has been far more active on the MMA scene uh, of late. She's been fighting very consistently, very regularly um, within the UFC. M Misha Tate took a good chunk of time out before her last fight. So... Um, her last fight in the UFC before her return was UFC 205 back in 2016. Um, and she's taken a good five years out, has returned against Marin Renault and looked excellent in that last fight. And just generally overall looks really good, healthy and strong and well conditioned. She looked very much like she enjoyed that fight against Marin Renault, which, you know, shows that she's in a really good place mentally. Uh, Caitlin Vieira is... She's, in my opinion, one of the future stars of this division. You know, she's she's picked up a couple of losses. The Connick Skyer one was frustrating because I, I feel like she had really good moments in that fight. And I, I feel like that last round could have looked very differently if she hadn't have been reversed at the very end and got opened up with those elbows. Um, I think she's a very tough individual. And I think this might be her opportunity to shine. Um, let's have a quick look at the stats first. So Caitlin Vieira, uh, 11 and 2, Misha Tate, 19 and 7. Um, Vieira's got a 2-inch uh, height advantage and a 3-inch reach advantage. Um, the other stat that stands out is 92% takedown defense, which is going to be significant in this fight because, of course, Misha Tate is going to probably want to wrestle. Now, <clears throat> if we talk about the, the, the technical attributes of Vieira's striking, She's got good discipline. She's got a nice side-on stance. She throws punches nice and straight. She can get a little bit wild, but you can tell that she throws with weight in her hands. Like she's maybe not got like like sting, like snap, but she lands with with power, with weight. Um, I, I also think she's quite happy to take a shot to give a shot. Like you'll see her trading low kicks for punches. Um, she's very confident uh, in that power exchange. And I think that she's going to look faster than Misha. And I think that she's going to look more physically dominant in those striking exchanges. Now, Misha does tend to rush forward and she does tend to throw and get a bit wild and overextend herself and then crash into a clinch, into a, uh, you know, into a, a, a takedown or, you know, a hold up against the fence. Vera's got good footwork, but she will also stand her ground and just crack with power shots on the way in. One of the reasons why she's happy to stand her ground, and we saw in the Sajara Eubanks fight, is as her opponent's closing distance, if they go straight through that clinch range and into a body-to-body -body lock, she's straight into hip throws and, and, and trips. Very good at redirecting people's momentum. And, and I've seen this happen against me, uh, with Misha Tate against Ronda. Like she does crash forward, she does reach sometimes, and I can see her getting her takedowns reversed and uh, Vera ending up on top. Now, if Misha's going to win this fight, it's because she's made it into a into a dog fight because she's closed her down and she's holding her up against the fence, kind of like what Kunitskaya did, takes her down and holds her down and beats her up and, and uses good elbows from guard and from half guard. That's something that has been effective against Caitlin Vera in the past. She's been hit with clean elbows and she's been hurt and she's been damaged and cut. Um... Katzinganu was able to land some good shots, but she was also able to stuff a, a lot of Katzinganu's takedowns. Same thing with Sarah McMahon. She was also able to take her down and submit her. So I very much feel like the grappling, the wrestling of Caitlin Vera is going to be a real deciding factor in this fight. If, say, for example, Caitlin Vera is able to defend the first couple of takedown attempts and then Misha's forced into a striking exchange, that's where Vera can... Uh, start to really show that that height and reach advantage as well as what I perceive to be a speed advantage. Um, making it very difficult for Misha to close distance. I, I really feel like if Misha's going to win this, it's going to be because she's taken her down. She's controlled her from top position. And then perhaps uh, Caitlin Vera is scrambling to try and get back to her feet and she gets her back taken. Like you can never count Misha Tate out. We remember that from the Holly Holm fight where she, you know, she, she had a, she had a really rough couple of rounds in that fight. You know, she was backed up in, in, in the striking ranges. Holly was able to defend her takedowns, especially after that scare in the first round that Holly had where Misha was on her back, nearly finishing that submission. Um, Holly Holm then adjusted her whole style to combat that. She lowered her level. She threw less. She overextended herself less, made it very, very difficult for, uh, for Misha Tate to engage. 
The point of difference is that Holly Holm goes from striking to takedown defense. Caitlin Vera goes from striking defense to takedown reversals. Like she's hip throwing, she's catching you and tripping you. She uses a lot of similar takedowns to what Misha uses, as well as a healthy dose of judo on top. Um, the the other thing the other thing with Vera as well is that she's she is a, she's a, a younger fighter she's a fresher fighter she's not here for for like her second run in the UFC she's here because this is what she's been doing for the last several years like Misha took some time off she lost a little bit of momentum and you've got to wonder what that looks like when she comes up against a sprightly young fighter in Caitlin Vera who is how old is she. 30. I mean, Misha Tate's only five years older, but Misha was the younger fighter in her last fight against Mara Renault, who was 44. Like, you've got to think, if Misha's coming in there against a fighter that's closer to her prime, then we're going to start to see some of that time out. And maybe that maybe that didn't show in her last fight against Renault. It may show here in this one. Like, as you can probably tell, I am the more I've researched this, the more I lean towards Caitlin Vera. I think she's I think she's got better discipline with her striking. I think she's probably gonna be more effective with her striking. I expect her to have a um a speed advantage as well as I've said. I also think 92% takedown offense is gonna be a nightmare for Misha Tate, who she doesn't always get her first takedown. Usually she has to kind of triage. She has to, ah, this one's not worked. I'll switch to this, I'll switch to this. That's where Caitlin Vera starts to starts to pick you up and throw you off and then start to pressure you with strikes. I also think Caitlin Vera is very good on, in top position as well, but I think that's going to be a difficult thing to do against Misha. I think Misha's got good enough wrestling to be able to either get the fight to the floor or at least stay off the floor herself. Um, it, it makes more sense that this is going to be a kickboxing match for Vera, that she will keep Misha on the end of her punches, and if she does end up taking this fight to the floor, it's because Misha's closed distance and she saw the opportunity to reverse, to use Misha's momentum on the way in, to hip toss her or redirect her and hit the floor. Um, it's a great fight. It's a stiff test for, for Misha Tate. I think I think a lot of people expect a lot of Misha because she was the champion, because she's always been competing at, at such a high level. But what we also have to realize is that the level since Misha was champion has shifted. And we didn't see that in her last fight because she was up against Marin Renault, who's from a similar generation, perhaps a bit a bit older, but still... Caitlin Vera is that new level of, of, of MMA fighter. She's trained now at Nova Unyao. She's, you know, something that V pointed out the other day. She's of a good size at Nova Unyao, where she gets to work with some of the really talented fighters that are already on the UFC roster. Like, you know, the likes of Hakron Diaz and, and Johnny Eduardo and uh, Leo Santos and uh, Jose Aldo, of course. Like, good fighters that will spar with, uh, you know, a, a five foot eight bantamweight that is aggressive like her. This is one of the reasons why she's developing so fast. They've got a good crop of male and female fighters in that gym and she can train with all of them. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, I just, I feel like although Misha has been a more proven fighter, I think, I think Caitlin Vera puts it together better. And I've yet to see Misha show me that, that point where she goes from, real nice striking to wrestling to back to striking to wrestling. It, it seems to be very compartmentalized for her. Um, whereas Caitlin Vera, she's she's very, very much a mixed martial artist. Um, okay, have I gone through the stats? I think I have. I think Misha's got to take her down. I think Misha's got to take her down. She's got to get to half guard. She's got to control her there for a couple of minutes. And she's got to smash her with elbows and maybe try and open up that scar tissue that she's going to have from the Cunnet Sky fight. That was Caitlin Vera's last bout. There is some soft scar tissue there. Might she be able to work into that perhaps? The longer it stays standing, the more I think we're going to see the the the, the better skills of Vera on show. But Misha might surprise me. She just tends to lunge forward a little bit, and I, f I feel like that runs her onto judo hip tosses. But we shall see. It's going to be a fun one. Let's catch you next time.